Hello and welcome to my channel. I've got a new antenna to use for uh, reticulum mesh chat um, and we're going to show you. It's the long one, the tall white one. It's a 5.8 dB high collinear and I thought it would give me uh, better receive signal strength than the, the normal antenna I use which is a much smaller, like half the length of that collinear with no name on it. This one's from Rack, um, <coughs> allegedly made in China. And uh, it looks like it works. And when you measure the, uh, the reflection loss, or SWR, it's, it's healthy. It all looks good. Um, the problem is, when I plugged it into an R node and then pinged <coughs> a local node about three kilometers away, or maybe five kilometers away, I got no response. And uh, in fact, I couldn't even ping it. <coughs> um, they wouldn't transmit, which I thought was a bit old, odd. Um, and I think the R node is inhibited from transmitting because on the, um, the latest version of the mesh chat program 1.20 there's an RSSI uh, noise indicator if you look at um, <coughs> the interface settings you actually see a noise level which was usually around 100, minus 100 or minus 102 dBs um, <coughs> might be dBm I'm not sure how it's calibrated it's RSSI so call it 102 dBs minus and um, I get that <coughs> from this uh, flat panel antenna McGill microwave flat panel and um, the problem was when I switched to the uh, the uh, vertical antenna <coughs> the noise floor rose to minus 90 dBm so it's 10 dB stronger noise um, and the R node didn't want to transmit pings or anything so of course I couldn't get a response from the, the other end so I think what's happening is that the R node when it sees a high noise floor, it thinks it signals and it shouldn't do any transmitting yet because it's civilized software. The uh, RNS um, reticulum stack is fairly civilized, I'm sure, <laughs> the R node firmware. So it doesn't transmit until the channel's clear. And of course, if the noise level's that high, the channel never will be clear. So I thought, well, let's have a look with a, a receiver today in the freezing cold, see what's going on. And what I've done <coughs> is I've connected these two antennas to compare them to each other because the flat panel works fine and the vertical doesn't work, it seems. And I connected them both to a receiver. I'm trying not to burn the kites too much, it's semi-rigid kites. So this is a, an RSPDX from SDR Play, which has several input ports. It's got three, but you can only use two. This one only goes up to 200 megahertz, so I've got A and B. And what I can do is switch quickly in the software between A and B to do a direct comparison of um, signals coming from those antennas. So, how do I do this? If I turn my camera off and then I do that, <coughs> not that, but do that, there is um, the, uh, the receive spectrum. It's 10 megahertz wide from uh, what, like 866 to 876, or 865 to 875, in fact. The mesh tastic and, and reticulum frequencies here that people seem to be using Euro in Europe, <coughs> 869 decimal 525 megahertz. And you can see there's some activity around, but if you notice, there was some descents. In this region here, the um, noise level has dropped, and I think that's desensing, desensitizing of the receiver. I don't think it's extra noise appearing. I think it might be just the receiver being desensitized, although now, when I look at it, oh no, it's coming from this. This um, is a very strong carrier, and there it is again. And when these strong signals pop up, then you see all this noise. And I don't think they're transmitting that noise. I think it's just noise generated in the, in the receiver because it's being overloaded. I've got the RF gain fairly high, 25 dBs out of a possible 27. I've turned off the AGC, automatic gain control, so that the noise floor doesn't jump up and down when uh, big signals appear, although it's still, you can see that there's some effect. Um, so what have we got? We've got uh, minus 100 dBm and a bit maybe minus 105 noise level and we're looking at antenna B which is the vertical antenna and that was the one that was giving me the problem of not being able to transmit so minus 105 dBm seems fairly uh, civilized to me as a noise level now if we switch to the other antenna antenna A the flat panel then actually the noise level is higher it's now minus 100 and minus 98 apart from when that happens of course so um, the flat panel has a higher noise level. That's a mesh-tastic node I forgot to turn off <laughs> indoors. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and the, uh, the vertical antenna that was giving the problems has a lower noise level, like <clears throat> nearly 10 dBs lower. Let me just do that again. Uh, switch to antenna B. And we see the noise floor drop down. 
yeah, it's gone down, <clears throat> nearly 10 dB is less. So um, then I couldn't really quite understand why the R node didn't want to transmit when it actually has a lower noise level. Maybe today it's different. Um, but I thought, well, there must be some big signal somewhere. And the, uh, the flat panel antenna is supposed to be resonant at 868 megahertz. And the um, vertical antenna says it's calibrated to work between 86 8 and 915 as well so it's a wider band antenna and i think what's happening is that it's it's letting through a wider bandwidth of signals even the ones outside this range that i can't see and that's what's causing the problem um, so the way to check that of course is to uh, put a, a much wider bandwidth receiver on than this it's only 10 megahertz wide so i'm going to connect my spectrum analyzer where's the uh, thing let me just turn the camera back on so what i'm going to do is use uh, one of these tiny SA Ultra spectrum analyzer, which I'm just turning on. The display's a bit dim, so you may not be able to see it. And what I'm going to do is connect antenna B, the problem antenna, to the spectrum analyzer and have a look, see what's really being received across a much broader spectrum, uh, which is RFN. It's the bottom one on this one. And it's scanning from zero up to two gigahertz, which is um, quite a wide spectrum. <laughs> it takes it uh, maybe 10 seconds to do that scan, but, uh, oh well, yeah, there's signals there. So zero to two gigahertz. And what I'm gonna do, try not to strangle myself on this piece of coax, is to take a look at the display. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it used to have a dark background, doesn't it? And you can see, there's the strongest signal right there. Where's my pointing stick? Let's be professional, use a pointing stick. Um, there. And the marker has jumped onto that big signal there. 868 is somewhere. Let's have a look at the display. Sorry I haven't got more cameras set up. That big signal there is at 935 megahertz, um, which is something I don't want to see. So, <laughs> if you haven't been to a circus recently, then you can enjoy this one. So that's 935 megahertz. And 868 is, is in there somewhere, in that uh, quiet gap. And then there's another big signal here. <coughs> now these are very big, very wide band signals, because remember this is zero to two gigahertz, so it's very wide band. And of course they're cellular telephone base station transmissions. So I'm gonna have a look at around 935 megahertz with my SDR. If I plug this back in and uh, see what's going on there. <coughs> I'm just turn that off and save the battery. It's very cold out here, so the batteries probably won't last very long. <coughs> It's the next problem. It's not easy plugging in SMA connectors on semi rigid coax because you have to get the angle right to be able to screw them on. So it was 935 megahertz, right? Let's go and take a look there. So I have to turn off the camera so that we can see that. So it's 868, 869 looking. Oh, there's a, there's a weaker signal. It must be somebody a few kilometers away. Let's go and look at 935. What I'm going to do is go up in 10 megahertz jumps. And you can see there are various signals around, <coughs> as you would expect, in this ISM band. And uh, it's all looking fairly civilised, less than minus 90 dBm. This is antenna B, so that's the one that was causing the problem. I'm 2990 wow. Oh, what's that? <laughs> yeah, and I'm clicking through now. 939 is, is at the right-hand end of the screen. Huge signal. Um, it's still there. It looks like broadband noise, but of course it's not. It's just multiplex, whoops, digital uh, cell phone transmissions. So um, let's go back. It's hard to find the edge, 960. It's about <clears throat> just beyond 960, because that's 970. Okay, call it 960. So uh, clicking down through the frequencies, 930 it's still there, 920 is just, yeah, it's still there. 910. So it's about 920 to 960 megahertz. It's about 40 megahertz wide. But look at the signal level. This is um, minus 50 dBm and those peaks are higher. About minus 50 dBm, which is a bit strong. And it's probably overloading the uh, receiver in the tiny R node. And this is minus 50 dBm over a, a, like a 40 megahertz bandwidth. So to get the real power that's being received, you'd have to integrate over that bandwidth which is huge, and then you get an enormous amount of power being received. So my theory is that this, although it's a, a, way, a long way away from the mesh-tastic and uh, reticulum frequency, this is causing problems in the receiver. And of course, the way to, to prove this would be to um, put a filter 
in line between the antenna and the uh, R-node or mesh-tastic receiver and uh, see if the, the problem goes away and the transmitter is allowed to transmit again. I haven't got a filter for 868 megahertz. I'll probably have to buy one. Uh, the problem is that the um, they've got quite a few of them on Amazon, very nasty quality made in China, and they're not even that cheap, to be honest. And um, <clears throat> I'm not sure how good the performance will be. Let's go back to the camera. So probably I'll have to get an 868 filter, put it on there. They, there's surface acoustic wave filters, saw filters that can withstand 100 milliwatts, allegedly. So I'll, um, it's okay to transmit through with a 100 milliwatt um, radio node. So I'll probably get one of those and put it in and see if the problem goes away. And uh, if it doesn't, I'll send it back to Amazon because it didn't solve the problem. <laughs> I think they're 24 euros or more, which is uh, it's a little bit steep for a saw filter. Anyway, let's see what happens and let's hope it's calibrated properly and it's got enough rejection in that band where the, uh, the huge signals are. I do have a filter for 1296 megahertz. No, it's not with me at the moment. Big monster, solid silver plated box with four huge plungers for cavity resonators, which is very narrow filter, high Q, really good quality, low insertion loss, and that probably cost thousands when it was new, um, just for the silver plating. But I haven't got it with me, so I can't try that, otherwise I would. Too heavy to carry around, it weighs several kilos. So I get a little saw filter with SMA connectors and we'll see what happens. Anyway, that's enough uh, waffling from me. Um, if you've got any comments or suggestions, please make them especially if you know where I can get a filter from or borrow one <laughs> to try because um, I think that's that's the problem. So at the moment, bigger is not always better. I mean, that, that antenna is certainly bigger and it's got a higher gain claimed than uh, the other antennas, but at the moment it's not usable because I think of the, the uh, noise, which is just uh, other unwanted signals in the, in the region. So um, thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe in the usual and see you in the next video.